Welcome to the Efficient eLearning SAP training series. In this video, we'll be posting a vendor credit memo against a purchase order using Transaction Miro. And here's our list of topics. First up, we'll confirm where Transaction Code Miro fits in the Procure to Pay process, followed by an explanation of the difference between a credit memo referencing a purchase order and a non PO credit memo. Before posting the credit memo, we'll review the status of the purchase order using transaction ME23N, Display Purchase Order. We'll then post a credit memo against a purchase order in SAP using transaction Miro. And finally, once the credit memo has been posted, we'll again review the status of the purchase order using transaction ME23N, Display Purchase Order. We'll also analyze the vendor line on display, transaction FBL1N. Let's begin with where Transaction Myra fits in the Procure to Pay process. At this point, it's probably useful to mention that a lot of organizations use the term credit note rather than credit memo. Credit memo is SAP's chosen term for this type of document. However, the two terms are interchangeable. Either one is acceptable. In this video, I'll use the more popular term credit note. Now let's take a look at the Procure to Pay process. A PO credit note references a purchase order, so the procurement steps in the procure to pay process create purchase requisition, approve purchase requisition, convert purchase requisition to purchase order, and post goods receipt should have already been completed, as is the case in this example. Transaction Miro sits within the post vendor invoice step and is completed by the accounts payable department. OK, so we've established where Transaction Miro fits in the Procure to Pay process. Now let's discuss the difference between a credit note referencing a purchase order and a non-PO credit note. Here's the two documents side by side. Note the difference in colour scheme between the invoice document that has blue heading backgrounds and the credit note document that has red heading backgrounds. Some vendors use a different colour scheme on credit notes to ensure the document is not accidentally posted as an invoice. But within the credit note scenarios, visually, the only real difference is the purchase order field. As you would expect for a non-PO credit note, this field is blank. Conversely, for a credit note referencing a purchase order, the field is populated with the relevant purchase order number. So why do some credit notes reference a purchase order and others don't? Some organisations have a strict policy. All invoices and credit notes must reference a purchase order or they cannot be processed. But typically, most organisations will require the majority of invoices and credit notes to reference a purchase order, with some limited exceptions. In this fictitious company example, invoices and credit notes for mobile phone plan costs are a permitted exception. That is, the documents don't require a purchase order. However, the purchase of mobile phone handsets still requires a purchase order number. In this video, the focus is on posting a credit note against a purchase order, so we can discard the non-PO credit note. Now let's review the status of the purchase order in SAP prior to posting the credit note. Navigate to the SAP menu folder Logistics, Materials Management, Purchasing, and Purchase Order. Double click on transaction ME23N. Display Purchase Order. Click the Selection Variant drop-down and choose My Purchase Orders.
If the purchase order you created earlier is not already displayed, locate the purchase order in the list and double click on it. Click this icon to display the list of tabs at item details level. Click on the Purchase Order History tab. You can see there is a goods receipt posting for this line of the purchase order. There have also been two invoices posted. If I click on the document number for the first invoice, you can see it is for the total order quantity and order value. If I click the green back arrow to return to the Purchase Order History tab and then click on the second invoice document, it too is for the total order quantity and order value. Clicking on the Payment tab reveals the invoice is blocked with blocking reason R, Invoice Verification. If I scroll across the invoice line item details, I can also see a blocking reason. In this example, the invoice is blocked for quantity. That is, because this invoice caused the total invoice quantity for the purchase order item to exceed the total order quantity. Please note the tolerance for total invoice quantity versus total purchase order item quantity in this system is zero. Now click the green back arrow twice to return to the SAP main menu. We'll now post a credit note against a purchase order using Transaction Myro. On the left of screen is the credit note, on the right is SAP. Before we start, I'll explain the reason for the credit note. The vendor has sent duplicate invoices for the purchase of mobile phone handsets. The credit note has been generated to offset the second invoice, as indicated by this text on the credit note. Let's now process this credit note in SAP. Collapse the purchasing folder and navigate to folder Logistics Invoice Verification and Document Entry. Now double click on Transaction Myro. If it's your first time using the transaction, you may be prompted with a dialog box asking you to enter the company code. If so, enter the relevant company code and click the green tick icon to continue. Regardless of whether you are prompted with a dialog box, always make note of the company code. If the company code is not correct, you can switch company code using the menu option Edit Switch Company Code. In this example, the company code is correct, so there's no need to change it. Also note the transaction field. We'll delve deeper into the differences between these transactions later on in the video series. In this example, we have received a credit note from the vendor to offset the duplicate invoice sent previously. Click the drop-down list for the transaction field and choose Credit Memo. Note the error message at the bottom of the screen. If you wish to bypass the error message and open up all of the fields for editing, simply click the Cancel button.
The first field we need to populate is the document date field. This is the date on the vendor credit note. Click in the document date field and enter the date referenced on the credit note. Next up is the reference field. This is the vendor's credit note number. Click in the reference field and type in the number from the credit note. The posting date is pre-populated with the current date. Normally this date isn't changed unless you've been given specific instructions by the accounting department. For example, sometimes at month end an instruction is given to use the last date for the prior month until the prior period is closed. In this example, we'll simply leave it as the default. The amount field represents the gross amount of the credit note, so the net amount plus tax. Click in the Amount field and type in the total value from the credit note. The Tax Amount field is the total tax value for the credit note. Again, click in the Tax Amount field and type in the value from the credit note. To the right of the Tax Amount field is the Tax Code field at Credit Note header level. If all of the lines on the Credit Note have the same tax code, you can enter that tax code in this field, and it will default to this value on all of the Credit Note line items below. However, if not all of the line items have the same tax code, it's best to leave this Tax Code field at Credit Note header level blank. In our example, there's only one line item, so we can input the tax code in this field. Based on the values on the credit note and experience of this type of purchase, the tax code should be P1, GST 10%. Now press the Enter key on the keyboard to validate the information entered. The credit note header details are now complete. We can now move on to the credit note line items. Note the purchase order number referenced on the credit note. Click in the Purchase Order field, enter the Purchase Order number from the Credit Note, and then press the Enter key on the keyboard. Note the Amount and Quantity fields for the Credit Note are automatically populated. The Quantity field defaults to the Total Quantity Invoiced, that is, the sum of the quantities from the two posted invoices. And the amount field defaults to the total quantity invoice multiplied by the net price on the purchase order item. Please note this amount field at line item level represents the net amount for the invoice line item, that is, excluding tax. Edit the values in these fields to match the values on the credit note. If I scroll across the screen, you can also see the tax code that was copied from the equivalent field at Credit Note header level. Now press the Enter key on the keyboard to validate the entered values. Note the warning message at the bottom of the screen regarding the net due date. Press the Enter key on the keyboard to bypass the warning message.
As the balance of the credit note is zero, and there are no error messages, we can now click the Post button to post the vendor credit note. However, there is an option to simulate the credit note postings. This is optional, but I always include this step as it can quickly highlight any possible issues with the credit note. For example, if there is a large variance posting. Click the Simulate button to simulate the credit note postings. These are the expected postings, that is, there is no variance posting. You can post from this screen, however I prefer to return to the previous screen to review any warning or error messages. Click the Back button. Again, as the balance of the credit note is zero and there's no error messages, we can now click the Post button to post the vendor credit note. Note the message at the bottom of the screen with the SAP document number for the credit note. Click the back arrow to return to the SAP main menu. Expand the Purchasing folder and double-click on Transaction ME23N, Display Purchase Order. Click the Selection Variant drop-down and choose My Purchase Orders. If the purchase order you created earlier is not already displayed, locate the purchase order in the list and double click on it. Click this icon to display the list of tabs at item details level and select the purchase order history tab. You can now see the credit note that was posted earlier. Click on the link for the document to display the credit note. As you can see, the credit note document contains all the information we entered when we posted the credit note. Please note this is the logistics credit note document. A separate accounting document is also generated for the credit note. To view the accounting document, click the Follow on Documents button. In this example, there's only one follow on document, the accounting document, so it's immediately displayed. For the moment, we are simply noting the existence of the different documents. Time permitting, we'll create a separate video analysing and explaining the financial postings. Now click the green back arrow three times to return to the SAP main menu. Let's now view the credit note on the vendor line item display, transaction FBL1N. Click on the SAP menu button to collapse the SAP menu. Now navigate to folder Accounting, Financial Accounting, Accounts Payable, and Account. Now double click on transaction FBL1N, vendor line item display. Click in the vendor account field and click the drop down list. Click in the name field, type XYZ asterisk and then click the start search button.
Now double click on the entry for XYZ Mobile. The company code field is defaulted to the correct value, so we can now move on to the line item selection. There are three choices, open items, cleared items, and all items. I'd like to see everything, so I'm going to choose all items. And in the type section, I'm simply going to leave it as the default value, normal items. Now click the execute button to run the report. As you can see, the credit note we posted earlier in Transaction Miro now appears in this report. The document type is RE. This is the standard document type for invoices and credit notes posted via Transaction Miro. Double click on the document number to display the credit note. This is the accounting document for the credit note posting. The entry currently displayed is the vendor line item. If you wish to see all of the postings for the accounting document, click on the Call Up Document Overview button. Additionally, if you wish to see the original document posting, that is the logistics credit note document, choose menu option, environment, document environment, original document. Click the back arrow twice to return to the vendor line item display. We've now covered all of the content for this video. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Thanks for watching.